Thank you. Well, grace and peace to each and every one of us that's on the Zoom. Today, and Jesus said, whenever you pray, pray like this, our Father, who art in heaven. Then he reveals his name, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's not just a prayer. It's revelation. It's secrets. It's mysteries. It is that I and my father are one communion. That in each season, before you start the new season, you must pray that sonship prayer. Jesus said today, three prayers. Each and every one of you write it down. It's very, very important. The face-to-face -face prayer. I'm going to share with you the right-hand prayer, the bride's prayer, and sonship prayer. Because many are not praying from a place of intimacy. They are praying from a place of slavery. He said, what do you mean by praying from a place of slavery? Give me, 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 give me. That's not love. That's not identity. When you don't know who you are in the kingdom, you don't even know how to approach the king in his courts. Esther knew who she was. And so she approached the emperor and her bridegroom. If I found favor and grace in your sight. You know, each season you have to find favor and grace in his face. Everybody, let me lay down this foundation again before we get to the father's business today. Remember the face-to-face -face prayer. That was revealed through Aaron. The right hand prayer that was revealed through Jesus. The sonship prayer. You have to pray the way Jesus prays to the Father. Not your prayers. That's why he says, if you abide in me and my words, not your words. If his words are not abiding in you, the Father don't hear you. Because Jesus is the firstborn. He's the only begotten of the Father. So when you are praying to the Father, you don't pray the way you want to pray to the Father. You pray Jesus' words. Because the Father only work and recognizes Jesus' words on earth. Because he's the firstborn. Give us this day. Many people play, pray, give me. Give me. He won't grant it to you because he said to me, selfishness is that scripture. You have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask wrongly to spend it on your own lust. So before we get into the father's times and seasons, oh yes, he has some instructions today. March 7th, go in. Take note of that. When Jesus gives you specific dates, now, concerning times and seasons, and every seven days, what will happen? Oh, it's exciting. March 7th. I'm going to share that visitation, what Jesus said. He's the agent of days. But before I share that, let me share this because... Genesis, Genesis 1, all of us on the line, look, listen, and learn on the third day.
on the fourth day sorry let me explain this in the beginning god created heaven and earth god created heaven and earth watch this he gave the earth to man as an inheritance because adam and eve were friends and sons and brides they never came into bride or friendship they were sons in the office, but they didn't become a son. Because true sons don't disobey their father. Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered. Suffering produces obedience to the father. Watch this. So when God was creating the earth, look, I'm going to share with you, watch this, the fourth day. This is what he said. He said, I restored the earth in six days. That means he worked in six days and rested on the seventh. And this is what he desires to do every six days. Watch this. And, and rest on the seventh, starting March 7th. That's very, that's him talking to you as ancient of days, but father. And I want to share with you on the fourth day, how he reveals himself through creation as ancient of days. Watch this. And God said, let there be lights in the firmaments of the earth to divide the day from the night. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I love this. Let them be for signs. Watch this. Seasons, days, and years. Hmm. So what are the three lights in the air? The sun, the moon, the stars. Do you know when you will become a sun? God the Father uses the sun, the moon, and the stars to reveal to you signs, seasons, days, and years. That's him as agent of days. So I can share with you on the line, the first day, what name was revealed? Do you know the Father revealed six of his names in each day he created the earth? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Second day, third day, for each day he revealed his name. Ah. Let me say it again. So he said, lay this foundation first because it's very important. Everybody write it down. March 7th. I'm going, to, I'm going to share with you the visitation. But Jesus was talking to me. He said, tell my people. See, when you have meekness, he reveals times and seasons and what you need to do and how to cooperate with him, especially like this. Now you say, how did you see the March 7th? I saw seven stars in the air. Everybody, read it again, because I know where some people will start going. Oh, are you reading stars? <laughs> are you reading the moon? No. Why do we give everything to the devil? I don't understand certain religious people. The wise men, God revealed to them the star to find Jesus. God uses stars to find his son. Uh-oh. But you see, because we have fallen so short of the glory of God, not even the glory of the Father. Do you know what the glory of God is? Everyone on the line? Let me share with you what the glory of God is because there's different glory. There's glory of God, glory of men, glory. The, it says the moon has a glory. The sun has a glory. Women have a glory. Men have a glory. Trees have a glory. Children have a glory. Even Satan lost his glory. So everything created on earth and in heaven has a glory. A glory is what you are known for. Lucifer lost his glory because of pride. And now his name has changed to Satan. That's why Eve's name, her name used to be Adam. Her name changed, but Adam's name didn't change. We're going somewhere. 
This is what I want to reveal to each and every one of you. Watch this. So if there is a glory of the moon and there's the glory of the sun, why? Some visitations, I see the Father's face in the sun. And sometimes I will see Jesus' face in the moon. And then sometimes I will see doves, doves, that's the Holy Spirit, swirling around the stars. Now, stars don't only represent angels. Stars also represent sons of men. That's why in the last days, the dragon will pull down one third of the stars. That's not angels. That's sons of men. J Joseph had a dream where he saw the sun, the moon, and the stars. See, watch this. When you are a dreamer of dreams, you understand how God uses creation to give messages. Let me say it again. Joseph was a dreamer of dreams. He had a dream where he saw the sun, that's his father, the moon, that's his mother, and 11 stars, that's his brothers. So in dreams, God can use the sun to reveal your father or him. The moon, your mother or Jesus. The stars can represent your brother or angels. You see that? But I'm excited to share with you this. Don't you want to know? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, right? And there was darkness on the earth and the Holy Spirit moved, right? And it says from the evening to the morning was the first day. But God did not reveal to Moses what name he created the first day. Do y'all want to know? Because we're supposed to go beyond Moses. Moses wrote the book of Genesis. He was face to face with God. But when you are face in face with the father, he starts revealing to you names of how he do things. So the first day he revealed the name. The second day he said, tell them about the fourth day. Four means perfect. That's why from now till March 20th, I want to prepare you all for a release that's coming from heaven on earth, but you have to know the signs of the times. You have to know the signs. Watch this. There are four things I want to mention with you, to you. You have to know the signs, the wonders, the marvels, and the miracles of times and seasons. See, when I talk, when we say miracles, we're not talking about just demonstration. No, miracles is a language. Do you know miracles is a language of God? You say, how? This is what Jesus told me when we were at a wedding feast and they ran out of wine. Now, how, many, how many of you know you can be reading the word, right? Meditating in the word, and then you are taken into. You are taken into and you see the whole scripture playing out like a movie while you are studying. And so while I was studying by grace, Jesus at the wedding feast at Canaan and they ran out of wine. And that's what he was saying about our generation, that our generation has ran out of wine. Do y'all know that? The church has ran out of wine. Uh oh. So he said, I'm doing a new thing. I'm going to, I'm, I'm coming with new wine. But how many pots were there? There were six pots representing the number of men. Man was created on the sixth day. So those six pots, it was instructions, direction, strategy for the new wine. Therefore, if you're going to be part of the new move, that's soon to hit after Passover, which is April. Okay, some of you may say, okay, what is the timeline of the father? Because that's his business, right? I need to say it again. So all of us, we know the timeline of the father because times and seasons is in his hand. Not even Jesus knows the day he's coming back. That's only the father has that in his hand. That shows you that even though he's one with the father, he's so humble and meek. That the father doing the father has not even revealed the day Jesus is coming back, but he knows the time and season he's coming. Jesus knows the times and the seasons he's coming, but he doesn't know the day, because you see days belong to the father. That's why he's called agent of days. 
And if you want to know about Ancient of Days, it was revealed to who? Daniel. You see, every man in the Bible, the God revealed different names to them. Ancient of Days to Daniel. See? Jehovah, I am that I am to Moses. God Almighty to Abraham. See? Each person who walked with God, he revealed a name and how he will manifest himself during their time. So... This morning when I was with the father, he took me back to creation and he said, this is how new heaven and new earth creation will be. What happened in the beginning will happen in the end. There's an old heaven and an old earth and there's a new heaven and a new earth. The old heaven and old earth is passing away, right? That means Genesis is a former glory. It's a former reign. You can't understand the latter rain if you don't go study the former rain. Because in order for you to do greater works with the Father, you must understand the great works of God. See, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. But that's not greater works. Because greater works is with the Father, not with God. You say, what's the difference between God and Father? Father is who he is, but God is his function. God is not his name. God is an office. Not his name. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. That's him as Elohim. Yahweh. So in time, I like to hide mysteries and secrets in time. But I will share with all of you in the line. The first six days, he said, each day, I had a name by which I created the day. He said, let's go to the fourth day. Everybody listen, no? Then he started talking to me about the sun, the moon, and the stars. And how he uses these lights. Because he's the father of lights. So there are lights he uses to reveal, see, signs. While everybody's looking for signs and wonders, signs belong to the father. See, signs, seasons. These four things I'm mentioning, everybody on the line, is very important. Jesus walked in this. Adam never got to walk in signs, seasons, days, and years. But it was first revealed to Enoch because Enoch got back what Adam lost. Enoch is the first man to walk with God, like how Adam did. But he walked with God outside the garden. Adam walked with God in the garden. So everybody look at this. This is, this is not just mysteries and secrets and revelations and treasures coming your way. This is for you personally. Watch this. In your walk with Jesus and the Father, in your book in heaven, you need to understand, watch this, you are a sign on earth. Ezekiel was a sign to the people. So, uh-oh, let me not start with this because people will trip. Have you seen those zodiac signs? Uh-oh. Now I'm not going to get into that yet. But those signs used to be for God until man fell and the devil took it. Oh. Uh, should I go there? I'm sorry. I don't know how to give milk. Forgive me. The times and seasons we are in, you can't be drinking milk. Milk is not enough for your growth. You need meat. Jesus said, the meat I eat. Meat is creation. Everybody, you see, see those zodiac signs? I'm not going to get into it yet. But those signs used to be for a father. It's going to be restored. Through sons. Take note of that. So watch this. This goes for each and every one of you. You are a sign on earth. The first sign to the star was Jesus. The father used a star to reveal the birthing of his son. So don't let nobody come to you and tell you, oh, uh, you, you can't read stars. Okay, 
go to where you came from. My father created the star and I'm, I'm not going to limit the way he wants to reveal himself and speak through his creation just because you don't believe. In Revelations, Jesus had seven stars in his hand that represented the seven angels. Why did Jesus have seven stars in his hand? For signs. Let me say this again. This goes for each and everyone on the line. If you want to walk with the Father and Jesus, walking. When I say walking, it's not only in spirit and truth. Take note, to walk with the Father and Jesus, there is a place. Moses says, show me your glory. God said, there's a place by me. I want to show you that place where you start the walk. But look at day four. But you see it? Day and night are signs. God divided the light, one for the day, one for the night. Who rules the night? The sun. Do you know, watch this, you ready? <laughs> the sun and the moon are kings. Oh. They are the kings of light. Because when you hear the word, you see, to rule. Watch this. Look at verse 16. And God made two great lights. The greater light, the day. Stop right there. So how are we going to do greater works? You need to know about the greater light. That greater light is during the daytime. Jesus says there's 12 hours in the day. Mm. 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 Don't miss that. I'm going to break it down again. Don't miss that. Okay. Day four. Father says, this day I worked as ancient of days. Adam, I had not yet created Adam. Because Adam was created on the sixth day. He said, I worked. 12 hours in the day, 12 hours at night. Do you know God worked night and day? Watch this. If Jesus said we're going to do greater works, you need to know, watch this. Out of the sun and the moon and the stars, which one is the greater light? Which one is the great light? And how, watch this. You and I on the line, we are stars. I'm going to give you a revelation about who Jesus is as the bright morning star. And that in the natural, the moon gets its light from the sun and the stars gets its light from the moon. Uh-oh. Y'all ready for more? That's why Joshua, his first sign was speaking to the sun and the moon to get, to get the will of God done. I'm going to say it again. Jesus said, you will do greater works than I. Don't miss this. Jesus is the moon. Father is the sun. You and I are the stars. That's why a star fell from heaven named Lucifer. So even among the angelic world, there are stars. Star represents destiny. That's what you hear in soccer or football, superstar. Everyone on the line, you have a star. But if you don't stay close to the moon, look in the night. Which star do you see shines the most? Venus. Have you seen that one star that always shines the brightest at night when you go outside? That's Venus. Venus only comes out at night. Uh oh. That is why, watch this. Jesus take you through the night season to prepare you for the day. It's called darkness. And there are four levels of darkness. Six to nine, nine to 12, 12 to three, three to six. Then you are ready for the father because the father is the son. Jesus said, my father is greater than I. Okay, so watch the, if Jesus said, my father is greater than I, and then in verse 16, it says, God made two lights, the greater light to rule the day. That means the father has a day he's coming. 
Watch this. And the lesser light to rule the night. He made, he made, he made stars also. I don't want to hear nobody talk about astrology and all that stuff. That those things the devil stole. We sons of God, we're taking the stars back because our father made it. Mm -hmm. Everybody see it? The book of Genesis, genes. Genesis means genes, DNA of creation. Genesis, the beginning. The genes, the DNA of creation, the DNA of man. The fourth day is ancient of days. So not now, but in time, because I like to keep your hunger and thirst open more. Each day, he revealed his name till he rested on the seventh day. The fourth day is what I'm sharing with you today. That's him as ancient of days. He used the moon and the sun and the stars for what? Signs. Seasons, days, years. Watch this. That is why face to face, I can tell you by this dominion the father has given, because he gave him what dominion over the air. What's in the air, everybody? The sun, the moon, the stars. And Psalm 8 says he has given us dominion over the works of his hands. Okay, so his hand created. That means he has given us dominion over the works of his hand as sons. So if we have dominion over the air, what's in the air? Not only the birds, the light. And what's in the light? Sun, moon, stars. What are they for? Signs. Seasons, you see? So I can come to you right now and tell you, hey, I'm seeing 20 stars around you. So what does that mean? The 20 represents years or how many years you got left to finish your process. Sonship. God used his creation to reveal his glory. You see? The sun, the moon, the stars. Like last time I saw Jesus, we were in the air and he raised his right hand. When he raised his right hand, I saw seven moons appeared. And then the, the, the eighth one was a star. Was a, how do you call it? After the, eight, after the eight moons, the sun appeared. His eight means new beginning. The sun is the father. Then he was revealing himself as the bright morning star. See? How Lucifer used to be the son of the morning and he was the morning star. He was not the bright morning star. Lucifer was the morning star. Because he was the son of the morning put in the garden. Jesus took that back from him. And now he's the bright so Jesus is a star, but he's the brightest morning star because he's been through the most darkness. That's why his light, his sorry, that's why his light shines brightest than all, because he's been through the most darkness. That's why he's the bright morning. Take note of that morning, not evening, morning star. And I say this to all of you: look, listen, and learn. If you're going to manifest your destiny and your purpose with the Father and Jesus, and you are a star, you got to get up in the morning. He's the bright morning star. And when that bright morning star is in you, you become a star. You shine the way he shines. Arise and shine. You can't arise and shine if, watch this, don't miss this, a lot of people quote that scripture. Oh, arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of God has risen upon you. Good. Nothing wrong with that. But you don't have revelation. 
Jesus has to reveal himself to you as the bright morning star for you to arise and shine. Or your light won't come because he is the light, not you. Your light will turn dark. Remember what Jesus told the Pharisees. If your light turned dark, how much darkness is in you? Do you know your light can turn dark? Ask Lucifer. He used to be in the light. Now, when you look in his eyes, it's full of darkness. But he can come to you as an angel of light, but not for long. Because he used to be in the light, so he can only have that light for a while to deceive you. Once you can see through the light that is deception, he turned dark immediately. So Jesus is the bright morning star. Take note of that. Why am I saying the fourth day? Years. See? Seasons. Everybody you see? Days. You see? Sign. Look at those four. You need to know what seasons we are in, what days we are in, what years we are in, and what signs we are in. Ancient of days. When you walk with the Father's ancient of days, he uses the sun, the moon, and the stars to reveal and explain to you because well, these things are on earth. They're not in heaven. The sun is not in heaven. The moon is not in heaven. There are stars in heaven because the angels are stars, but there are stars on earth. God told Abraham, I'll bless you as numerous as the stars. Stars also represent blessing. Do you see, everyone on the line, do you see why you need to be connected to the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit? And on earth, why you need to connect with God-ordained, God-covenanted destinies. That means, watch this. When God brings you together with someone, we all used to be in the womb of the Father. We were just birthed in different years on earth. All of us comes not only from the image and likeness of God, we're coming from the womb of the Father. That's where Jesus came from. And so all of us on the line, see, years. You might be 29. This person might be 31. But we all used to be in the womb of the Father. But when we came on earth, our years changed. Because of the fourth day. See? So you say, how does he use years? That's what you see in the Bible. How the ages of men were left on the Bible. It says, God visited Joseph at the age of 17. Why did God leave the age 17? And then after 20 years, his dream came to pass. See? Don't miss this. Certain dreams and visions you have, there are years and days and what 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 else? There are years, mm -hmm. there are days, there are signs and seasons on that dream. So you need to know dreams of destiny, dreams of purpose, dreams of identity, dreams of intimacy, dreams of inheritance. It's just not going to manifest tomorrow. Each dream. Mm -hmm. Or vision, because remember, visions are from heaven. Dreams are for the earth. Dreams and visions are signs of his language. Let me say it again. Don't miss this. There are dreams of destiny. It won't happen to after 20 years. Some dreams happen in seven years. You say, how? Let's go to Pharaoh. Pharaoh had two dreams in one night. Don't miss this. Pharaoh had two dreams in one night. You dream according to your rank, responsibility, and destiny. He had a dream. His first dream was about uh, the fat cows. The second dream was about the skinny cows. There were seven cows that were fat, see? And then seven cows, see? God used cows to reveal years. When Joseph came to him to interpret the dream, he said, these two dreams are one, and he's showing you, Pharaoh, 
what God's about to do the next 14 years. Wow. So two dreams was equivalent to 14 years. The first seven years, you will go through plenty. The next seven years, that's what he said. You're going to go through famine. Mm, I'm going to make this man the prime minister of my nation. Because he has wisdom and intelligence to know what God is telling me and how I need to watch this. How I need to rule and reign as an emperor. Because Pharaoh was an emperor. So watch this. There are kingly dreams. There are imperial dreams. There are bridal dreams. There are friendship dreams. There are sonship dreams. Maybe one day I should do dream school. There are different types of dreams. God speaks through dreams according to your identity. And your function and responsibility to what he has called you. If you're a prophet, you have prophetic dreams. If you're a king, you will have kingly dreams. If you're an emperor or a... Watch this. However the father birthed you to, for you to become, to manifest his glory, you will dream on that level. I am called to America and Israel. So every time I have visitation with Jesus, he's always talking to me about America and Israel. Always. Or the earth. Because there's three prices. There's darkness, gross darkness, thick darkness. That's three different glories. The glory that was and is and is to come. So do you know there are three glories for, there's a glory for each darkness that's present. There's darkness on earth. Watch this. There's darkness in face. And there's darkness on, it says, watch this. It says darkness on earth, gross darkness on the face of the people. And then thick darkness, that's where God dwells. So there's three darkness. And there's three different glories for those darkness. And right now, Jesus told me presently that the earth is not in darkness right now. Watch this. He said in the beginning, Genesis, the earth was dark in the beginning. In his time, it was gross darkness. In our time, it's thick darkness. So what glory do we need for thick darkness? You got to know the years, the times, the seasons, the signs. You need to walk with him as agent of days. Because the name agent of days was revealed to Daniel. Daniel 7.14. Daniel sees Jehovah <laughs> calling the son of man. That's Jesus. And he gave him, watch this, dominion, glory, and kingdom. Don't miss this. I'll share with you. That's why I tell many people, look, don't come up before time. Can I say it again? To all of you that's on the line, each and every one of you, there's an identity, destiny, purpose, and a ministry in you. But if you want to listen to the wise counsel of a father, look, listen, and learn. I have been in the multitude of counsel in heaven, the fathers of old, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Elijah. And if you listen to their wise counsel, when Jesus allowed them to talk to you, you won't rush when you come back on earth. Like Moses. You know what Moses said to me in heaven when Jesus took me to the cloud of witnesses? See, they are cloud of witnesses to witness to you about their time, but they are also preparing you for your time and how they are backing you. Moses said, God took 40 years to prepare me. Why is your generation rushing to come out too soon and they are not even walking in what I walked in? Can I say that again? When you come back on earth, especially when I tell you what Apostle Paul said in heaven, you're going to be like, whoa, you will wait. It doesn't matter what revelation, visitations you have, you will wait. Because it says being under governors and tutors to the appointed time of the father. The father has an appointed time to bring you out. Until then, you stay in the fire with Jesus. Till you are molded and shaped into his image, likeness, nature, and heart, you're not ready. You say, how? Let me tell you what King David told me in heaven. Because he's a king. See, 
when Jesus allow you, to, when watch this, when Jesus permits you to be taken to heaven, he will allow you to talk to the patriarchal fathers. Why? Because you're going to be a father in this generation. So he make you talk to the fathers of old, those who have walked before you, to listen to their wells of wisdom. David is the one who was teaching me about how at the age of 17, Samuel gave him a prophetic word about his destiny, that he's anointed to be a king. Watch this. And then David started teaching me his whole process till he became a king. And then I like what David said. He said, just because a prophet is sent by God to anoint you to be a king, don't mean you are ready. You, that don't mean you are ready for a throne and it don't mean you are ready to rule and reign. He said, God sent Samuel to anoint me as king. But watch this. It took him from the age of 17 to 37. How many years is that? Go read this in the Bible. It says at the age of 30, the Israel knew what to do would come to David to make him king. But it took him another seven years for him to be anointed, made king over Israel. But he got that prophecy when he was 17. This is the ancient way and our generation right now is a popcorn generation. Let me tell you what the prophet Elisha told me in heaven about Gehazi. How Gehazi was after Naaman and his money rather than the mantle. This generation is more about money than mantles. Gehazi chose to pursue Naaman's money rather than the triple portion. Gehazi was supposed to get triple portion. See, Elisha got double from Elijah. This is how mantles and portions are passed down. But it's the Elijah lineage stopped at Gehazi because of money. And he got cursed. Then God, watch this, that lineage continues through Jonah and John the Baptist, and it ends at John the Baptist. The Elijah lineage ended at John the Baptist. Why did they carry over to Jesus? Remember when they tried to call fire from heaven and he rebuked them? Mm -hmm. They tried to call fire from heaven on their enemies and just says, you don't know what spirit you are of. The Elijah lineage did not cross over into Jesus' lineage, only Moses' lineage. That's why if we don't know your lineage, you'll be doing the wrong thing at the wrong time, mocking the Father and bringing shame and disgrace to his kingdom. You don't want to do that as a, as a son. As a son, you want to represent your father. Do what you see him do. Not do things on your own like Lucifer. Jesus said, I can do nothing of my own, but what I see my father do. I tell this generation, if you don't see the father do it, don't do it. If you don't hear the father say it, don't say it. Or you cannot be a trusted king in the next world. Let me tell you what the father said. He said, this earth is a university of sons and kings. I use this earth as graduation." Many are called, but only few will be chosen in the next life. So you can be a king here, but not a king in the next world. Because you didn't graduate. And that's what happened. So what Jesus told me what happened in the books of 1 Kings and 2 Kings. He said, out of all the kings, only five made it. David. Solomon. Josiah. Judah and Hezekiah. All the other kings from Manasseh to all of them, they all did evil in the sight of God. The book of Kings, 1 Kings and 2 Kings, is manifesting again in our generation. But these are not kings after David lineage. These are kings after Jesus lineage. 
He said, in Revelation 1, 6, I've made you a king by my blood. In the Old Testament, you were made king by oil. The oil is put on your head, and now you are king. Jesus is doing it in a new way. Jesus pours oil, sorry, Jesus pours blood on your head, my God, for you to become a king. Because the blood speaks greater things, not oil. Oil speaks, that's the anointing. But whoever talks about the blood being greater than the anointing? He says the blood speaks greater things. In order for you to do greater works, you need the blood of Jesus on you, in you, through you. You have to drink it. See, the anointing, you don't drink it. Uh-oh. The anointing, it says that anoint my head with, huh, anointing for your head. But the blood is for your heart. You have to drink it. You realize Jesus was anointed with oil? Not by John? Who was pouring oil on Jesus' feet and his head? A woman. A woman anointed Jesus. The three wise men brought myrrh, frankincense, and gold. Each one have a revelation. Myrrh, frankincense, gold. Everybody take notes. If you're on the line and you are pursuing the Father in Jesus for the highest, deepest, greatest, closest, and it's, it says, with God, all things are possible. Then look, listen, and learn. The number one thing you will need the most is patience. Because let me tell you what Jesus said. He said, the Father revealed who I am to Peter as the Son of God. And that rock I used to build my church. He said, in the end times, he's not building his church. He's building his world with the treasures of heaven, not stones, infinity stones, treasures. Difference between a stone and a treasure. Not all stones are treasures. Watch this. Where your heart is, is where your treasure lies. So can I help you get treasures of heaven? Check your heart. You can ask for treasures. You have to develop the right heart to get the treasure. Where your heart is. So if your heart is on women, or your heart is on men, or your heart is on children. That's where your treasure is. And moth will steal it. If your heart, mm -hmm. heart to heart, heart in heart, heart like my heart, glory, the glory that was face to face, the glory that is face in face, the glory that is to come face like my face. Look, you don't just see Jesus just to see him. His ultimate goal of appearing to you is threefold. 1 John 2. Oh, sorry. 1 John 3 going. This is what it says. Let me, let me read this one for you. Watch this. Oh, it's very, very important. You can't become like him if you don't read this scripture right here. 1 John. Watch this. 1 John 3, 2. Ooh, this is for sons. Watch this. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. It didn't say apostles. It didn't say prophets. It didn't say pastors. It didn't say teachers. It says sons of God. This is for sons of God. Many are called to sonship. Only few will be chosen. And it does not yet appear. Bam. Sonship is equivalent to appearances. So, you're supposed to be getting appearances for sonship. It does not yet appear or manifestation what we shall be. Ah. But we know that when he shall appear, bam. That means if Jesus don't appear to you, the next cannot happen. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. Wow. Write that down. You cannot become like Jesus if he doesn't appear to you. 
Not you studying him. You can study the word all you want. That don't mean you are like him. You will get knowledge and wisdom and not his nature and his heart. Watch this. In order to have his image, likeness, nature, and heart, he has to appear to you. Steady to show yourself approved. Studying approves you to God. It don't make you like him. Here, sons are supposed to be like him, but the only way you can be like him, you need appearances, encounters, seeing. Watch this. We shall see him. No, it didn't say we shall study him. Mm -hmm. It didn't say we shall read him. It said we shall. That means you need the eyes of your heart open. Not the, not the eyes of your windows or the windows of your soul is your eyes. Not them eyes. You need the eyes of your heart open. Not, the, not your, your eyes, which is the window to your soul. The eye is the window to the... Not them eyes. It's not your soul that's supposed to be like him. Your heart. Because the heart is what rules and reigns the heart rules the soul. The heart reigns over the body. The heart is the one that controls the body and the soul. So if Jesus is not in your heart, he's not ruling and reigning over your soul. If I look at this, you want to meditate on this one. This is the key to becoming like Jesus. You cannot become like him. Reading about him. Impossible. You fail. But here in John, remember John. Now, this is not John, the one who put his head on Jesus' head. This is Jesus' biological brother's book. Jesus had four brothers. Two walk with him. This is John. Not John, the 70-year-old who put his head on Jesus' chest. That's the son of Zebedee. The brother of Andrew. See, remember, Mary brought his, her two sons, John and James, to ask Jesus. See, John was his, John's mother was Mary, the sons of Zebedee, not Jesus' mother. But Jesus' mother had four boys and two girls. His sisters and brothers, Bible says, came. And Jesus said, my brother and my mother are those who do the will. Jesus had, Jesus had five siblings, three brothers, two sisters. They did not follow him before, but in the end, two of them did. This is the, see, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. It's Jesus' biological brother. You see that? And he's getting this kind of revelation. Watch this. We shall be like him. You can't be like Jesus if he does not appear to you. I'm going to show you in James also there's another way to become like him. Watch this. We shall see him as he is. If you want to know Jesus as he is, I'm sorry to tell you, reading the Bible is not enough. You have to see him. That means the eyes of your heart need to be, that's why it says, and how God has shone light out of darkness and he has shone the light in our heart mm -hmm, that we may behold the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Do you know Father has to shine light in your heart to open the eyes of your heart to see Jesus? Your eyes don't just open. No. Read first. Corinthians, sorry, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. You need light from the Father to shine in your heart. Not your face now. You see, with Moses, the light shone on his face. And he saw the glory of God. Not, see, that's Moses. That's Old Testament. You need those, that kind of glory, though, on your face. Mm -hmm. But to see Jesus and the Father... You need the light to not shine in your heart, not your face. Read, read 2 Corinthians 4, 6. 
the glory of God is in the face of Jesus Christ. So how are people saying, oh, uh, the glory is here and you didn't see him face to face? You're lying. No, you want the real thing? We want the real thing, not gimmicks. We got to pursue him like this. Watch this. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. Boom. Every time Jesus appears to you, you are becoming like him. So fasting and praying don't make you like him. Uh-oh. Going to church every day don't make you like him. Uh-oh. Who want to become like Jesus? In heart. Sorry, in image. In likeness. In nature. In heart. Those four. Lion. Eagle. Lamb. Man. Nature. Image. Likeness, heart. Let me, I'm telling you what the father told me to tell you. That until you become like his son in image, likeness, nature, and heart, he will not share his glory with you. You have to be like Jesus in order to be trusted by the father. So first things first, that's why intimacy with Jesus, let me tell you how it works. Intimacy, relationship, fellowship, communion. You see those four? Image, one birth image, one birth likeness, one birth heart, one birth nature. And then at that point in time of the Father, when Jesus takes you to the Father and the Father look at you, you look just like, it's like you're almost like twins. You look just like Jesus. Now you are ready. Until then, don't rush. Or you're not gonna make you're not gonna last. You're not gonna you're not gonna last when you come out. Because you're gonna be facing the God of this world. Mm -hmm. Do you know what you're gonna face? Do you know who Jesus faced when he first came out? At the age of 30? As a son, Satan, face to face, one on one for 40 days. Are you ready to face Satan 40 days straight? Mm -hmm. Take note of that. Who won the real thing? It's not just by revelation and mysteries and secrets. It's not also just by the written work. Or Jesus says, my words are spirit and life. See, the word of God take you in the spirit, not the flesh. He said, my words are spirit. That means, watch this. When you are in the word, you're supposed to be having spiritual encounters with Jesus. He said, my words are spirit and life. So you're supposed to be having, you're supposed to be having Spiritual visitations, spirit, as you are in the word through meditation, his words are it's supposed to be feeding your spirit, not your head. Many, how's this? I know people who have memorized scriptures and they have a nasty attitude. They are not like Jesus. You know why? Because the word is, watch this, his word goes to your spirit. That's hot. First. And then your life. Ah. Oh. How do you know the word is in you? You will see your life. See? He said, my words are spirit. And life. That means when you are in the word, you are supposed to be having spirit. See? Spiritual visions. Spiritual encounters. Spiritual revelations. The Bible is not a book. It is spirit and life. So watch this. And uh -huh, when he shall appear, uh -huh, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Write it down. Appearances from Jesus Christ make you pure. You cannot be pure if Jesus don't appear to you.
Are we in the word? Oh, my heart is pure. No, it's not. It's not if you haven't seen him face to face. We shall see him. Take note of that. I know people who know the word. They don't know him. Mm -hmm. Oh, they can quote scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. They don't even know his favorite food. I'm talking about a personal relationship. Not a biblical relationship. You can have a biblical relationship and end up like the Pharisees. They knew the word. They had holiness. They had righteousness. They had truth. But they were murderers. They had another father. How can you be in the father's house having another father? And you have the Torah written by the father. Don't that scare you on the line? That you can be in God's house and have another father? Jesus says, you are not my sheep. Because you don't love me. And you don't love my father. Bam. He said, you, you search the scriptures to find eternal life, yet you refuse to come to me. You see the difference? You can search the scriptures to find eternal life and still end up in hell. What? See, Jesus' words set you free. He said, you search the scriptures to find eternal life. And that scripture, he says, he says, you neither know the scriptures nor the power of God. You can, watch this. A lot of people have scriptures, they have no power. How you know you have scriptures is power backs the scripture. He told the Pharisees, you neither know the scriptures, one, nor the power of God. So how come in today's church, we have scriptures, but no power? And read Ecclesiastes. It says, in the mouth of a king is power. That means everyone on the line, if you are speaking, declaring, and decreeing, and nothing is manifesting, let me tell you what's going on. There is no power back in your words. That means you don't have authority and power in that realm of revelation. Because when a king speaks, it says, in the mouth of a king is power. Bam. Why am I saying this? I'm going somewhere. Don't miss it. Because in this time and season, you need to know your identity in, in order for you to speak. Ecclesiastes, watch this. Ecclesiastes, let me show you. 8.4. Where the word of a king is. There is power. There are many who are speaking, but they don't know their identity as a king. Watch this. And if we don't know your identity as a king, there is no power accompanying your words. It's empty. You're not a threat to Satan. He is only, let me tell you, the only thing Satan is threatened by, that you are a king. Because he's a prince. That makes you outrank him. And watch this. He will blind you from you not knowing you are a king. So he can deceive you so he, so, he can, so he can keep you in the realm of unbelief of who God has made you. I'm saying this because of what the father shared about this last days, the age to come. See, age. Let me, let me tell you what he said about the last age, the last days. You see? Because there is an age in the spirit. Let me share with you if you don't mind. Watch this. Father is agent of days, right? Don't miss this. Every year, that means every 12 months, walking with Jesus, you age 50 years in the spirit. How old are you spiritually now? I'm going somewhere. Don't miss this. Every 12 months, you age 50 years in the spirit. That's what the number 50 represents in Jubilee. That is why 
there's a certain age Jesus had to reach before he reached sonship. Don't miss this. How old was, watch this, how old was Adam when he was created? A thousand years. Right? Because a day to the Lord is what? A thousand years. So on the sixth day when God created Adam, he made Adam a thousand years old. I hope somebody's catching the revelation. Until you are a thousand years old, <laughs> uh-oh, in the spirit, you can walk in certain dimensions. See, in order for Adam to be put in the garden and given dominion and giving glory and giving kingdom and walk with God face to face every morning over the kingdoms of the guard, over the kingdoms of, watch this, the plants, right? The animals. He had to be a thousand years old. Wow. If you're not a thousand years old, you can get revelation, but you can't manifest it. Do you know there's a certain age you must reach in the spirit to manifest certain things? That's why it says the powers of the age to come. And the father started explaining to me about the age to come. That there's a certain age you must mature spiritually to manifest the revelations he's been giving you. Because you can have revelation, but without manifestation, it's only a seed. I'm going to help each and every one of you in the line. Don't miss this. I'm going to break it down. So watch this. You have to be a thousand years old to become a son. I've shown you Adam. That's why, watch this. God made Adam a full-grown man, a full-grown son. He was, he was outright a thousand years old the, the moment he was made and created. He wasn't born. So he didn't have to go from zero to a hundred like Jesus. Jesus did the opposite of Adam. Adam was a hundred. Jesus was zero. Everybody's seeing creation, how God works. A day to the Lord's a thousand years. So on the sixth day, Adam was a thousand years old. How old was Eve? We're going to get there later. But I want to watch this. So it's a thousand years, right? So for you to be in the garden, don't miss this. And have dominion and glory and kingdom. To be fruitful and multiply. To have dominion and subdue. See, the face-to-face -face decrees in the garden. Adam had to be a thousand years old. How old are you spiritually? That's why you're not ready. But people don't want to hear that these days. They want to rush. Okay, go ahead. If you want to rush, go ahead. I know how you will end. Because the father is the beginning and the end. And when you walk with him, he shows you the beginning and the end. I know how people will end if they don't mature to a certain age in the spirit. Watch this. I mean, now, I've shown you about Adam, right? Let's come to Jesus. How was he a thousand years old before God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased? From the age of 12 to 30. That's 18 years it took for Jesus to become a thousand years old. And at the age of 30, he was a thousand years old spiritually. Watch this. You ready? Old enough to fight the old serpent in the garden, in the wilderness. So that 40 day fast that Jesus did, he was a thousand years old spiritually, but as a man, he was 30 years old. Now I'm going to share with you my death and hell process and how Jesus went through the same process. Watch this because he said, I'll be in, I'll be in death and hell for three days and three nights. That made Jesus, watch this, 7,000 years old. The death and hell process speeds up your years in the spirit. Uh-oh. Can I say it again? How old was Jesus? He's the last Adam, right? Good. As the last Adam, he had to be the same age as the first Adam. Sonship. 
18 years. Then Jesus, so if it took Jesus 18 years to be a thousand years old, and he and the father was ready to come on earth with him after 18 years. If our generation don't, if this generation don't get this ancient wisdom, they'll violate the process. Even the earth is waiting for manifestations of sons, right? Even the earth knows how old you need to be before it obeys you. You can't go tell the sun and the moon to be quiet. They're not going to listen to you. Because Mother Earth also understands about ages. Do you know why when Jesus rebuked the sun and the sea, it obeyed? Because the earth knew he was a son because he was announced by the father. If the father don't announce you to the earth, the earth is not going to manifest on your behalf. Do you know the father has to tell the earth who you are? That means the earth needs to know your identity before you walk here. You realize the father didn't say, this is my beloved king. He said, this is my beloved son. So everybody, how many years does it take for you to become a son? 18 years. That means in those 18 years, you're going to have a, okay, let, I'm going to say this one, what Jesus said to you. You ready? Woo. Ask for this. It was in 2017. Jesus said, no, I, I want to share that visitation because it's important. We were standing on a high mountain and the sun was rising. And he said, the sun represents times. Don't miss this. And that's when he said, a day with me is a thousand years. Watch this. He said, you need a thousand appearances from me. To become a son. Write it down. You need a thousand. Face to face. Visitations. From Jesus. Before you are ready for the father. Don't rush. Can I say that again? He said you need a thousand. Right? A day to the Lord's a thousand years. The father works in the numbers of thousands. He begins with thousands and ends with trillions. Um, of course, he's in infinity realm. I'm just speaking earthly right now. The father is omega. Alpha is million. Omega is billion. Look up the meaning of omega. Billions. That's just the God realm, alpha and omega. Of course, the father is a trillionaire, infinity and beyond. But can I explain to you about ancient of days? A day with me is a thousand years. You need a thousand visitations with me, Jesus Christ, in order for you to become like me before you're ready for the Father to come down on earth. So if you haven't had a thousand visitations with Jesus, you're not ready. Do you know how many visitations Jesus had from the age of 12 to 18? Sorry, from 12 to 30, he told me. He had a thousand visitations with the Father through the Holy Spirit from the age of 12. That's why he told his mother, Mom, I must be about my... How did he get that... Rev how did a 12-year-old get that revelation about being the Father's business? Because the Father's business is 18 years. So he knew at the age of 12, it's time to do my father's business mm -hmm, by going through this 18-year process to become a son. And Jesus took 18 years to change the world in three years. Everybody, do you see numbers? You don't need 40 years to change this world. All you need is preparation and time is more important than the number of years. And the longer the wait, the greater the impact. Why are people rushing in this generation? 
Just because you get a revelation or a visitation doesn't mean you are ready. Remember what Jesus told Paul. Don't exalt yourself above measure because of the abundance of, see, just because you have abundance of, and yes, you can have that grace on your life to have abundance of revelation, abundance of visitation, abundance of visions. That don't mean you are there. Vision, visions and dreams is showing you where you are going to be in the future. See, Father shows you your end, who you will become. That don't mean in the present you are there yet. Because according to that visitation, uh -huh, encounter, and revelation, watch this. You have to be molded and shaped into the image, likeness, and nature of Jesus for that visitation he gave you. Can I say it again? This should make you all thirsty on the line. Ever since 2015, I've counted how many visitations. Watch this. Not only you're going to have it, he's going to send people your way to tell you. You have to receive them. People by lineage, people by tribe. Don't miss that. I'm going to say it again. This is the standard. That's why on the line, I will keep telling all of you, pursue Jesus and the Father. Because there is, there is an amount of visitations you must have before you are ready to face the world. Have you seen people who come out too soon? Do you know what catches up to them? That's why when they come out too soon, you don't hear about them no more. Why? Because they didn't finish their process. They came out too soon. Too soon because of people. Oh, man, you're getting all these revelations, visitations and encounters. You should be on Sid Roth. I'll be laughing at them. Yes, I laugh at them. Because Jesus said to his own brothers, my time has not yet come. You need to know the timing of your coming out. Jesus said, no, David said, my times are in your hand. That means you got to be hand to hand with Jesus to know your times. And don't, don't let nobody bring you out too soon. Oh, you know, people tell me, man, when are you, when are you going to write your books? You are more focused on a book being written than your love for the father. Yeah, maybe I need to write books. Did Jesus tell you? Stop listening to people. Did Jesus tell you to write the book? Or people want you to put, watch this. How many of you have heard of Mary Kay Baxter? Recently, Kiki took me to meet one of her daughters in the Lord. And she was telling me about her story. How she got, how she was taken to hell for 40 days. Watch this. And the leaders in the church were telling her to write a book about it. Not knowing they had an intention to take all her money and her proceeds. So she wrote the book. The people wrote the book for her. And all the money that came in for the book, they took it from her. Did Jesus tell her to write the book? Or the people say, write the book. Stop listening to people. They want to steal your revelation. And make it like it's theirs. Can I say it again? They want to steal the revelation God gave you and make it like it's theirs. That's why they're telling you, write your book. Oh, why don't you, oh, uh, why don't you open a, a website? And I don't, I'm not, don't listen to nobody. Did Jesus tell you to do it? If he didn't tell you to do it, you are being led astray. Oh, when I write in your books, man, the visitations you have every day, I just, I'm just quiet. Because one day, I wanted to write books. You know what Jesus told me? He said, I have many servants 
who are writing books. I'm not looking for a servant. I'm looking for a friend. Don't write any books. Books were not written about me until I left the earth. No book was written about Jesus until he left the earth. So just because people have written books and it's great revelation and a blessing to the body of Christ, that don't mean they are his friend. Uh oh, I was shocked. I was in California, laying in bed. Jesus walked in the room, sat on the bed. See, he already knows your thoughts, so he'll talk to you about it. I know he's in your heart and mind to write books about all the encounters. He said, I have many servants who can write books. You are no longer a servant. You are a friend. Everybody online, what will you choose? Will you choose to be a servant who writes books or be a friend? A friend gets more secrets than a servant. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, write the books. It will be a blessing but it won't last. Let me say it again. It will. Your book will not last if Jesus himself didn't tell you to write it. It will be a blessing to people, but it won't manifest. Look, you want to write books that Jesus said write, and when people read it, manifestations follow. That's how you know heaven has put a signature on that book. Two. If the Father and Jesus didn't command you to write that book, why are you writing it for money? Now people are selling their revelations for money. Did Jesus tell them? Hmm. So just because you see people writing books and you go to their churches and they have a library and you have to buy the book, do you think Jesus is pleased? Oh, I'm going to tell you what. Look, I will only tell you what he says. He's not pleased with many people who write books and sell it. Freely you received the revelation. Freely you should give. I told Jesus, if you tell me to write books, I will not sell it. I'll give it for free. Do you see how we bring the world into the church? Oh, you should write a book and sell it. You will make money off it. So, wow. Jesus gave you revelation and now you have made a merchandise out of his revelation. You're going to be held accountable. You're going to be held responsible for not being a good steward of his treasures. That's like saying John writes the book of revelations and sells the book. Be careful. That's why I love Prophet Sadu. Jesus up. He had to him face to face and said, stop selling your books. That means he, he said it. He said he's, he had been doing it wrong, selling his books for a long time, and Jesus never told him about it. That's scary. For you to get revelations like the way he did and put them on Kindle and Amazon to sell it. And to one day just appear to him and told him, did I tell you to sell your books? <laughs> did I tell you to sell the... <laughs> when, I, when I heard his testimony, I knew the encounter I had in California was true. So I'm sorry to tell you, people who sell their books, yes, you will get revelation from it. But, there is, but heaven does not approve their method of relaying the visitation to you because he gave it to you free. You didn't have to pay for it. Why are you making people pay for the revelation he gave you? Uh oh, oh, well, you know, we need to make money. Uh huh. He can't trust you with more revelation. Who wants to be a trusted friend? You don't sell your friends secrets. You don't sell kingdom treasures. You don't give holy things to dogs. Nor your pearl before swines. Yeah, I know it's totally opposite of what you've heard in the church. Oh, when you go, hey, you know, uh, we are selling oil. We are selling, uh, uh, we are selling um, prayer straw. 
He's in the church these days. If Jesus was here right now, he would be flipping tables. You know what he told me? One day, he and I went to a church in Texas. I will not mention names. And just like biblical times in his time, he said, you see the doves that I threw out? He said, they are selling the Holy Spirit. How do you sell the Holy Spirit? Everybody go read it. When Jesus went entered and he whipped them out, he flipped the tables and they are doves. They were selling doves in the house of God. Dove represents Holy Spirit. He said, in your time, they are selling the Holy Spirit. How do you sell the Holy Spirit? An innocent dove. See, I'm letting all of you know there are things people do in the body of Christ. You think Jesus is pleased just because it looks good or just because he gave it to them. That don't mean that's the method he chose for them to do it. Smith Wigglesworth. How many of you know about Smith Wigglesworth? He was pastoring for 20 years and Jesus appeared to him and said, you've been out of my will for 20 years. I didn't call you to be a pastor. I call you to be a prophet. 20 years. And he asked Jesus, why do you never told me? He said, you never asked. I'm letting you know something about Jesus. He's meek. And he will not tell you until you ask him. He wasted 20 years of his life outside the will of God. Pastor in the church, but he's called to be a prophet. Can you see? You, you can be doing what you think is right. And Jesus has not called you to do it. And you are wasting time. You can be doing something right now, but Jesus didn't tell you to do it. You are out of his will. And guess what? He won't tell you. Because he's meek and quiet. That's his nature. He's meek. He's quiet. He has many things to tell you, but you cannot bear. So he'll be quiet. Unless you ask him, he won't tell you. I asked him. He sat next to the bed and said, I have many servants who can write books about me. That don't mean they are my friends. Cool. You see? He said, I'm not looking for a servant to write books. I'm looking for a friend. Don't write any books. I'm looking for a friend. Wow. Because greater love is for a man to lay down his life for a friend. What's greater? You writing books or laying down your life for Jesus as a friend? Years later, when Prophet Sadhu said that, I said, wow, what Jesus said was true. He was selling books. Jesus appeared to him and said, stop selling your books. Give it freely. Now he's doing it. That should let you know what he says to one, he's saying to all. But people have become whoremongers and money hungry. If you sell what Jesus gave you, you have become a prostitute. Don't sell face to face. Don't sell healing. Don't sell deliverance. Don't sell prophecy. They are freely given. Freely you receive, freely you should give. Mm. Take note of that. Take note of that. So if Jesus pour oil on you, and then they call you, oh, man of God, how much is your honorarium? How much are you charging for a service? I start crying. 
I am not for sale. It means you cannot pay me. When I stand on the pulpit, the first person I'm waiting to see is Jesus and the angels. And what I hear him say about the church is what I will say. Like John, he was sent to the seven churches face to face with Jesus and the angels. That's how we are supposed to be sent. John did not charge the churches for him to write letters to them. You know what I call them? They got bounties on their head. You know, in the streets, when they put a bounty on your head, most of these so-called leaders have become money hungry and now there's a bounty on their head. You, this is not pleased. Oh, that was a powerful word. Yeah, the anointing will flow, but he's not pleased with you. You say, how? Let me tell you about Moses. God told Moses to speak to the rock. Don't miss this. He hid it. And even though the miracle came out, everybody on the line, the miracle happened. The water flowed to the people. But God took Moses home early. So just because miracles, signs and wonders is happening in the ministry, that don't mean God approves the method of how it's done. God told Moses, speak to the rock. He hid it. And that ended his ministry. So can you see? Just because miracle, signs, wonders, or manifestations is happening in the ministry, that doesn't mean God approves the way they are doing it. As a matter of fact, he's about to replace them with Joshua. God told Moses, Moses asked three times, can I please? God said, no. Why did God stop Moses from entering the promised land? Unbelief. Because Moses had a problem with his mouth. See, if you don't deal with your problem, Moses had a stuttering problem, so he couldn't speak. So when God wanted to change, the glory from using his rod to now using his mouth. He could not change times and seasons because he was so used to using his rod, he couldn't change. You realize, everybody on the line, Joshua never used his hands for war. He used his mouth. So God replaced Moses with Joshua. Joshua used his mouth for war. Moses used his hand. But Moses couldn't transition from mouth to hand. Sorry, from hand to mouth. If you cannot know how to transition seasons, it's dangerous. See, walking in the glory is not, it's, walking in glory is different than walking in presence and glory and anointing. Because glory you are representing him, that means you must do it the way he tells you. For example, Jesus said, all of us on the line, and I know we don't have time, but we will do it before March 7th. We are all to get handkerchiefs. So March 7th, start now, you're going to get handkerchiefs. He said, like Apostle Paul, I did extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul by handkerchief. He said, in this season, by my hands, I want to do extraordinary things, but they must get handkerchiefs. So, March 7th, we're all going to get our handkerchief. We, we've done it before years ago. The Lord said, again, Paul, God used handkerchiefs to do miracles. And God want to use your handkerchief that you're going to get. My God, I'm excited. You say, another one. He said, this another one. You ready? Elijah. Elijah wrapped his face on his mantle. The mantle, the color was brown. So 
God told Elijah to wrap his face in his mantle before it rained. Ooh, don't miss that. And the Lord said, tell my people they are to get mantles to wrap their face in it. Are you ready for strange instructions in this season? The rain, the rainbow is coming, but you have to do what men of old did to get the manifestations they got. That's right, Manuel. My handkerchief is not for sale. Hallelujah. You didn't see Paul selling his handkerchief to the people. So the handkerchief has to be white. But I'm showing you, Jesus was showing me about Paul and about Elijah. He said, look at what they did to get the manifestations they got. What did Elijah do? I said, Lord, please show me. And I saw Elijah put his head between his knee. Watch this. He wrapped his face in his mantle and prayed seven times. Wow. See? Direction. Instruction. And that's how the rain came. The hand of God moved and it rained in Elijah's time because he had a mantle on his face. I'm ever ready to get a mantle of face to face. Consecrated. Then he said, now go to Paul. Handkerchief. So, March 7th, that's when it begins. All of us on the line. Start today. Go to Walmart or go to a Christian bookstore. Get you a white handkerchief, or even your prayer shawl. Get ready to write on it. Because he has, he has given the instructions what to write on your handkerchief or your mantle. And when you are praying, you wrap your face with it and watch. Oh, there's more instructions. This is just two. Remember? Everybody watch this. Elisha told the woman, go and get seven bottles and put oil in it. See, prophets come and give you strange instructions according to the time. In that time, it was famine. And see, so instructions will get you out of famine. But it was strange. He told the woman, the woman couldn't pay her bill or pay her, her debt. Go and get seven pots of oil. See, instruction. Okay. Peter. Go and cast your net to the right side. The fish, the miracle will happen. Who's ready for instruction this time and season? There you go. First one, he said, everyone on the line. The next two days, get your handkerchief. I'll show you in the book of Acts. It says, handkerchief and aprons were brought by the hand of Paul. And God did. See, God is the one who's going to do it. See, that means God can use the elements of the earth. Mm -hmm. Everybody take notes of that. Mm -hmm. So it's 12. Does anybody have any questions tonight? Let me remind you again, from now to the 7th, please. If, if, if it's your prayer show you have, bring it on the line because I want to tell you exactly what we are writing on our prayer shawls or our handkerchiefs. If you don't have a prayer shawl, you can go by Walmart, get you a handkerchief, a long one, and you're going to write the instruction on it. And guess what you're going to, it's going to be your prayer mantle. You're going to wrap your face on it. Mm -hmm. And watch God do extraordinary just like the Bible says, God did extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. That means in this season, he want to use your hands to do extraordinary things, but you need your mantle with you. Jesus had a mantle. The woman who touched the hem of his garment, that was his mantle. So, uh-oh, what's going to be in your mantle? Elijah took his mantle. You know what he did? 
he split the river with his mantle. Oh, my God. Come on. I like that, Manuel. He said, is there a difference between sowing to a prophet for revelation and paying for a prophetic word? Okay, here we go. Let me break that one down. Never pay for a prophetic word. Never. That's psychic. Okay, let me, let's go to the word. When Samuel lost his donkeys and he came to Samuel, he came with a gift. So you can come to a prophet with a gift. That honor, watch this, because it's not about the gift you have. It's an honorarium. His honor for Samuel as the prophet to the nation activated, see, because honor, God looks at the honor you have for the prophet to open heaven. See, Jesus said, watch this. A prophet is without honor in his hometown. So watch this. Jesus couldn't do many mighty works and healings because of their dishonor and familiarity. So do you know honor? God opens the heavens. When you honor a prophet, he opens the heavens and pours rewards on you through honor. Not the money. It's your heart, not the gift. So you can sow right now, but if you don't have honor, it's just money. And I'm not going to receive it because I don't want no curse on my life. So watch this. Is there a difference between sowing to a prophet? Yes, you can sow to a prophet, but it must be from your heart. See, Jesus said, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far. Honor and humility proceeds from the heart. So you are honoring the prophet, watch this, with a gift. Then God opens the heavens over you and pours out the reward. That's the business transaction. But you don't sow money for a prophetic word. No. Let me say it again. Never sow for a prophet to pay to prophesy to you. No. However, Holy Spirit will move upon your heart to sow in that season of revelation because some manifestations happen through sowing. That means you're going to reap. So I need to say it with balance. Sowing and reaping is the Father's business. Demand and supply. And like prophets of old, like Samuel, or even Jesus, the woman came with her expensive alabaster oil, poured it on his feet. She was sowing. Mm -hmm. So please remember, please remember, Please remember, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm answering what Manuel said. That's very important. Sowing to a prophet for a revelation. No, you never sow to a prophet for a revelation. Revelations are free. Secrets are free. You only sow, watch this, when it comes to honor. That's why the Bible says in Malachi, watch this. If I'm your father, where's my honor? And then God starts telling Israel how his honor system works. He says, you have robbed me. And they say, how we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. So God uses tithes and offerings as an honor system for windows of heaven. Tithes and offerings is an honor system of heaven for, hmm, so that not gates, not doors, windows of heaven to open. So do you know tithes and offerings open windows, not doors? Now that's tithes and offering. Okay, what about seed? And what about first fruit? Seed open doors. First fruit open gates. That's what the Bible says. Honor the law with your substance and the first fruit of your increase. Honor the Lord with your substance. You see? Substance is money. 
So it's not about the money you are sowing to the prophet. It's the honor that God looks at, not the money. Let me say it again. Honor the Lord. You're not honoring the prophet. You're honoring the Lord who sent him. That's why when people sow to me, immediately I'm looking for somebody who's poor to give it to. I'm sowing it to somebody else because it's more blessed to give than receive. How many of you want more blessings? Give more than receive. So let me break that down again. Tithes and offerings is for the windows of heaven. It's an honor system. It's not a payment. You don't pay your tithes. No. Tithes and offerings is a friendship honor system of the Father's business. The windows of heaven open when you see tithe and offering. But seed open doors. I can't even talk, I can't even teach you in the natural. When a man puts a seed in a woman, her womb gonna open. Come on, somebody. Seed open doors. But the first fruit, which is the baby, open gates. Seed breaks cycles. When a man sows a seed in a woman, he breaks her period cycle. So Jesus taught me that seed breaks cycles. So it's not about money. It's about honor. Because before honor and humility is riches and long life. It is true. Many have prostituted their gifts. Asking for money to bless people. That is Jezebelic. The gift is free. Okay, so another question. Blossom said, what's the revelation behind it? The prayer shawl. Okay, good. In ancient times, the prayer shawl represented mantles or robes or garments or cloths. And God can use nature like sticks. He used a rod to do miracles. So if God can use a rod or a stick to do marvels, he can use anything to, to manifest his glory. He started that with Elijah. Elijah's mantle was his prayer shawl. So do you know prayer shawl is mainly for prophets? That's why you see the Israelites or people from Israel, they have prayer shawls where they, they turn their face to the wall. It's called the talit. The high priest in the holy place wore that. Prayer shawl is for those in the holy place, not the outer court. So when the woman touched Jesus' hem of his garment, she was healed. That was his prayer shawl. So watch this. When you pray, the power and glory of God upon you and in you can even get in your clothes. Yes. That's why you see someone like Benny Hinn take off his jacket and wave it. And people are falling under anointing. Why? The man has spent so many hours in prayer that now watch this. The fire and the oil has got in his clothes. It's called impartation. But people want to laugh at him when he take off his jacket. They don't understand the things of the Spirit. Jesus breathed on the disciples and the Holy Spirit entered them. So that's the revelation blossom behind the prayer show. The more you pray, that fire is baptized on your clothes. A woman like, what's, it, what's her name? Catherine Coleman. She would just walk in. And people start falling. Glory. It permeated her skin, her body, her clothes. Mm -hmm. Anybody else tonight? So take note. Everybody get your handkerchiefs ready. Mm-hmm. Get your handkerchiefs ready. 
Acts 19. I want to read from there. Aprons and handkerchiefs. Extraordinary things. Extraordinary times. Yes, anybody else have any questions? Yes, Manuel, this session is being recorded and it will be on YouTube. So when you go on YouTube, you can type in Holy Way Covenant Global Ministry and the recording will be on there so you can hear it again in Jesus' name. Yes, anybody else? So I remember what Jesus said. He said, the Father's all about timing and perfection. He said, love waits for my timing. Will you wait for my timing? Watch this. Jesus said, many will go before you, but I'll put you last because I saved my best wine for the last. He said, he said, the first will be last. The last will be first. It is better for you to be last and be the first fruit of my wine. So you cannot convince me to come out early. I have been put last. If you want to, if you want to walk with the Father and Jesus, they will put you last. Not first. Never have an ambition to be first. It's pride. The Father's heart is to be last. The last days. The best wine is given to who? Those who are last. See, in the world, it's all about who's first. In the kingdom, it's about those who are last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the color of the mantles, right? It can be white. It can be white. Uh, Jesus has had me done red before, yellow, and blue. But mainly, it's the white one. So the color of the mantle, uh, you can even get a rainbow, rainbows in yours. But the, the main ones is white because, you, because you're going to be writing decrees in it so you can see it. That's why you want to get a white one because we, you're going to be writing decrees and scriptures in it that will manifest through prayer. Oh, amen, amen, amen. So God bless each and every one of you for coming on tonight. Please remember, March 7th, on your mantles, we're going to be writing the names of the Father first in your heart and then on your mantle. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. So amen, amen, and amen. Well, God bless you all for tonight. And we meet tomorrow at 9 p.m. In Jesus' name, amen. So shalom. Everybody have a good morning. Love you all.